What if I told you you can engage your reader in your memoir using an absolutely organic approach that is rooted in your story itself? And what if I told you this approach is also rooted in your reader's story? And so the reader will connect to your memoir easily. I'm about to share with you a winning strategy. But first, I want to welcome you to the Better Memoir Writing Masterclass channel. I am Denis Ledoux, author of the classic granddaddy of memoir writing books, Turning Memories into Memoirs, and I am the founder of the Memoir Network. Today's topic is structuring your memoir along the lines of the hero's journey. In another video, I spoke about your hero's journey as the subject of your memoir. It proved to be a popular video, and I hope that you will look it up. In this video, I will discuss how you can apply this knowledge of what the hero's journey is to actually knowing how to structure your own memoir according to the hero's journey. First, let me say that while the hero's journey is appropriate for many memoirs and memoir parts, it is not appropriate for all memoirs. A memoir in which uh, you wish to portray your ethnic culture, for instance, would not use a hero's journey model. But if your memoir is about leaving a loveless marriage, the hero's journey model would be just what you need. If your memoir is about a struggle, that struggle ought to be written as a hero's journey. Let's quickly go over the main steps of the hero's journey, its main components, as outlined by Joseph Campbell. And then I will apply this information to writing your memoir. The hero's journey begins in innocence. The hero seems to be happy, or perhaps at least accepting of the hardships in life, or of life as it is, accepting the conditions as inevitable as the way things just are as they have to be. In the next stage, the hero becomes aware of how negative the conditions of life are, and these, uh, this awareness grows more and more burdensome and even intolerable. The individual grows more aware that life does not have to be the way it currently is. Inevitably, the hero tries to make accommodation so that life will work better. Perhaps these accommodations impinge on the hero's very soul, but at this point, the fear of struggle and strife or retribution from a partner is too frightening. The hero does nothing. Of course, the situation worsens. The hero is more and more aware that a change has to occur. The hero is not, however, aware of various possibilities of possible outs. The hero is only aware of the great difficulties of change. Ultimately, the hopeful paradigm of adaptation fails. The hero is out of options for creating a better situation. The hero sees the necessity of change, often a frighteningly drastic change, and uh, slowly accepts the need to venture out from the situation. The crisis, the struggle, is initiated by this vision of the possibility of change. Because the vision of possible change brings the inevitability of change for the hero, this is when the hero embarks on the hero's journey. The change, whether slow or quick, incurs reactions from people around the hero. People try to retain the hero in the old habits. 
but the hero is determined to move on. This crisis point is often the journey at its most difficult. Finally, in a turning point of the story, the hero gains insights and establishes life supports and executes a definite change for the better. The hero grows aware of what has happened and draws conclusions, both for the self and for the community from which the hero has come. This is the ending of the hero's journey and of your memoir. Now, let me apply this knowledge, this overview of the hero's journey, to what is a typical struggle that I hear in my coaching practice. The struggle is a relationship fiasco, a marriage that goes bad. There could be many other examples, but a bad relationship, a bad marriage, will do. At first, the hero is very happy to be in a relationship with this uh, other person. This is the period of innocence. Perhaps the hero is making all sorts of projections on the partner. When the partner is being possessive, for instance, the hero interprets this as he or she loves me so much that they want to keep me. At last, I am wanted. This memoir would probably include chapters on meeting your spouse or mate and falling into what you presume for whatever reason is love, true love. You overlook faults that you see in your chosen one. Oh, they're not that bad, you said. You say to yourself, I get so much out of this relationship. In a second phase, there is growing awareness that not all is well in this marriage. The incompatibility, or, or worse, the controlling traits of your partner begin to impinge on you seriously. The hero is stopped by the spouse from perhaps making friends, or perhaps the hero is not given free reign on spending money. The hero begins to perceive jealousy as pernicious and as limiting. It is really an imposition the hero no longer likes, but is not yet willing to do anything to jeopardize the situation. Perhaps the relationship brings in significant financial stability, and the hero is not willing to risk losing this. While the hero understands that there are certain things that his or her partner could do to make the situation better, bringing these things up to the partner would entail conflict. The hero is not willing to risk conflict. In denial, the hero tries to accommodate the jealousy or the constriction of the partner. Perhaps the hero says, Oh, this isn't so bad after all. There is at this point a fear of struggle again, of the unhappiness or imbalance that struggle would bring. In an attempt to make the marriage work, the hero suggests counseling, and the two go off to counseling. For a time, it seems, the counseling is helping. But eventually, things break down again. The hero once more suggests counseling. The couple goes to counseling. Again and again. There is some amelioration, but then the deterioration begins once more. The situation worsens. The hero in this marriage feels more and more choked. It's as if their soul is beginning to die. For many, this is a time when they think, there's not much I can do. Perhaps they say, there are the children and the financial considerations, and so forth and so forth. Perhaps they think, I will be alone and lonely and poor. I don't want any of that. Let's see what I can do to appease the situation. 
Often this appeasement is dependent on constricting one's self, limiting oneself, becoming someone else than who the hero is. Adapting one's expectation to a diminishing return begins to fail. It's just not enough. The hero is out of options at last. The hero has not been very heroic up to this point. With more soul-dying experiences, the hero realizes that something has to change. Others in the environment, the husband or the wife, the parents, the children, try to keep the situation as it was. This is where the hero sees the necessity of a drastic and total change, leaving this marriage. But the hero is not ready to do so. There comes a moment when the hero at last realizes that he and she accepts the need for a change and that change will be difficult. Finances will be separated. Custody of the children will have to be determined. Perhaps one or both partners will have to move out of the house, which, after all, has to be paid for. If neither alone can afford to keep the house, it will have to be sold. Perhaps the hero's family is very angry that he or she is putting an end to this marriage for some reason. Your family and friends like your partner. This is really the crisis of your memoir, the period in which, under great difficulty, change has to occur. It simply must be negotiated. One client told me how, one night, after putting the kids to bed alone one more time, her husband was out again, she went outside and sat on one of the kids' swings. Unexpectedly, the realization came over her that she was not going to put up with this marriage any more. It had been a long time that she had been struggling, and she now knew that there was no way it would get better. She said she wept in sadness there in the dark on the kids' swing, but she knew she had made a decision at that moment on the swing. This woman's crisis had been happening for a while, and she had reached her turning point. She had at last understood that she needed to be a hero in her own story. At this juncture, the hero steps out and commences a new life. This turning point my client had reached was an important one. This new life is difficult, and it is full of hardship. True, the emotional strife has ended, but the finances are absolutely shaky. There is much loneliness, and there is a continued struggle with the partner who has been rejected and now wants a pound of flesh. In time, and it may be a long time, the hero comes to an understanding of his her, her needs. Now more mature and in touch with feelings, the hero continues building a new life. Perhaps it is a single life, or perhaps it is a life in which a new partner, a more mature person than the former spouse, comes into the hero's life. In this paradigm, the hero writes a memoir that is the equivalent of Jason returning with the golden fleece. The hero, you, is bringing something back to the community. It is, the hero is bringing something that the community needs very much, just as the people would have perished without Jason's return of the golden fleece. So, in some way, we can say that people will perish without the witnessing of your own hero's journey. If you would like to explore receiving help with your memoir on any aspect of memoir writing, know that we offer a 30-minute complimentary get-to-know-you co coaching consultation.
The link to a free consultation is in the description below. Before you go, please hit the subscribe button at the side of this video and click on the bell at the top of the screen. Subscribing assures this memoir writing content will appear on your YouTube homepage and on your recommendations bar to the right. And be sure to check the description below for links to a free video e-course that I am making available to you. Remember, inch by inch.